Hey guys, welcome back. I had planned on going through the Hubworld MMO example project step by step. We covered login and create character. So the next step would be character customization and persisting that data in OWS, but plans have changed. Simis in Discord provided me with a modular character. Thank you, Simis. I had not planned on using a modular character because I didn't have one I could distribute. But now that we have one, I am modifying character customization to include the modular character. Because of this delay, we are going to jump into combat using the gameplay ability system and the enhanced input system. These systems are very complex and it will take us many weeks to cover just the basics. Before we do that, I would like to quickly cover gameplay loops as they are going to be essential to our game design and our combat loop in the Hubworld MMO. But before we get to that, I want to give a quick update on Unreal Engine 5.2. First, the Hubworld MMO project has been updated to Unreal Engine 5.2, and you can grab that updated project from GitHub. There's also a new alternative to the Foliage Shadow Imposter plugin that works in Unreal Engine 5.2. In Unreal Engine 5.2, you can adjust the World Position Offset Disable Distance to help manage your virtual shadow map cache page performance. Setting the value to zero means World Position Offset works at an infinite distance. Setting it to one effectively disables world position offset. And you can choose any distance value uh, that you want. Technically, this setting is less ideal than the Foliage Shadow Imposter plugin, as this disables world position offset on the tree and the shadows, whereas the Foliage Shadow Imposter plug in plugin only disabled the shadows. So maybe there might still be some use cases for the Foliage Shadow Imposter plugin. Hopefully, more performance adjustments will come in future versions of Unreal Engine. Let's take a quick look at how you can use this new value. If we go into the foliage placement mode and we select our foliage type and we scroll down to world position offset disable distance, you can adjust at what distance from the camera world position offset is rendered, which will um, have an impact on the the VSM cache pages, virtual shadow maps. So you can see here that I'm in virtual shadow map cache page. Remember green is good, red is terrible, blue is still bad. And uh, if I adjust this to 10,000, you can see that the blue, these are, these are having to update the cache. Uh, and this is significantly slowing down the frame rate. There's a lot of trees here. I think it's like 6,000 of them stacked together just to be able to show the performance hit. And so then if we adjust that down to 5,000, you can see that it's a smaller area close to the camera, right? The only problem with this is that when you're underneath the trees, it's pretty much always going to, if you're, if you're close enough to be able to see it, it's going to be close enough to be able to cache the shadows. So this probably works pretty well with sparsely populated trees, but a dense forest, this still is, is not going to be ideal. And uh, the Foliage Shadow Imposter plugin is, is still going to provide better performance while still being able to show you the swaying trees uh, in the wind that you're under. Because um, basically setting it to one here is effectively disabling world position offset, not just for the shadows, but unfortunately for the entire, for rendering the tree as well. It would have been ideal if they would have given us a world position offset disable distance specifically for the shadows. Maybe in a future version, we'll see. What is a gameplay loop? A gameplay loop is a cycle of actions you repeat over and over. Games are made up of a series of gameplay loops within other gameplay loops. How you design and structure your gameplay loops will have a massive impact on the longevity of your game. Gameplay loops can be categorized into short, medium, and long-term. Here's some examples. A short-term gameplay loop might be kill the next mob, right? Whatever that combat entails of killing that next mob. A medium gameplay loop is the loop of killing enough mobs to collect items for a quest completion. A longer-term gameplay loop would be completing enough quests to raise your character level high enough to meet the minimum level requirement for a dungeon instance. Games work best 
when short, medium, and long-term gameplay loops are fun and fit together well. Let's think about a few examples. Let's imagine that you had a game where the long-term gameplay loop was great, it was a lot of fun, but your shorter, medium-term gameplay loops were not. This is the kind of game that people often refer to as grindy, right? You have to grind through killing those mobs, doing those quests. They might not be any fun, um, but you might do it because the long-term gameplay loop is fun, right? And so we kind of want to try to avoid that as much as possible and have it so that our short, medium, and long-term gameplay loops are all fun and they all fit together well. The opposite example could also be true. You might have a great uh, combat system that's a lot of fun. People really like it. They, they don't really get tired of it quickly. It doesn't feel grindy. Maybe you have some good medium uh, you know, quests or other things. Maybe your story is good. But you don't really have any good long-term gameplay loops, long-term goals. And so people quickly go, well, what am I doing this for? I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not reaching toward a goal. I'm not moving toward that goal. And so they might just say, hey, there's nothing. You hear people say, hey, there's nothing left to do in this game, right? And, and so that often happens when you don't properly manage your, your longer term gameplay loops uh, to keep people interested and having something uh, fun to do. Let's talk about the hub world gameplay loops. I mentioned this some in a previous video, but we'll go over it again. So here's kind of three of our main, you know, we could we could call these well, I guess they're medium to longer term gameplay loops, but uh, we have kill enemies beyond the south gate to gain upgrade materials, right? So this is something that you can do over and over. And within that, there would be a combat loop, right? So you might say, hey, I'm going to go kill enemies beyond the south gate because I need to gain some upgrade materials for some weapon or armor that I need to upgrade. And, but to do that, you have a combat loop, right? You, every time you engage a mob or a group of mobs, that there's this combat loop. And so that's a shorter term gameplay loop. Then another one is that you can gather resources beyond the south gate to sell and craft upgrade materials, right? So now there's this new shorter term gameplay loop of this resource gathering, right? What, what do we do, right? Is it just something where we just, you know, walk up to something and click on it and we get it? Or is there some more process we have to do, maybe tools we have to have, maybe Maybe we have to use things to search for it, right? Different things. It, it, we have, we're going kind of a sci-fi feel here. So I thought it might be fun if we have some kind of uh, system where maybe you place down, you know, certain uh, survey type equipment and stuff, maybe do some triangulation and find where resources are. Uh, might be fun. So we could turn that into a gameplay loops, right? So that we keep that, you know, fun. And it's not just, oh, I see a resource over there. I click on it, right? Type of thing. Um, maybe we'll do a combination of, of different ones there. Uh, so that's that's another gameplay loop, right? The resource gathering loop. And then also there's a crafting loop, right? Is it is it just something where you collect some materials and then you go somewhere and you click a button and it creates it? Or is there something more, you know, that we're going to do? I haven't, haven't put a ton of thought into that uh, yet. Uh, so we'll have to work through that together and figure out what we want to do there. But, you know, it would be ideal if we could create a fun crafting loop so that we get that, you know, short-term gameplay loop, right? Uh, that's fun in itself, and it's not just, you know, the end result uh, that we're interested in. And then we also have, through the North Gate, we have clearing the string of multiplayer dungeons, right? There's a series of multiplayer dungeons that get harder and harder. Those are where our weapons and armor drop. Um, this also has the combat loop, right? Because you're going through it doing combat. Uh, but then there's also this loop of getting, you know, up getting these weapons and armor and then using the upgraded materials from the other gameplay loops, you know, to upgrade those and work together as a team, right? This is a multiplayer game, work together as a team to be able to progress further in the multiplayer dungeon system. Let's talk a little bit about the combat loop in Hubworld MMO because we are moving into uh, combat. Um, next, uh, next week, we will take a We'll take a more in-depth look at uh, the combat system, and we'll go through the code uh, that's already set up in the Hubworld MMO project and talk through that. Uh, but let's just talk a little bit about combat loops in general. So you first have stalking an enemy mob, right? So there's nothing that necessarily says because you see an enemy mob, you're instantly engaged with it, right? It's, it's not that kind of game. Um, so you 
you first have this, hey, do I want to attack this enemy? Do I not want to attack this enemy? And it could be based on knowing whether that enemy is more powerful than you or not. Um, you can also separate any mo enemy mobs to engage fewer at a time. So, right, so some of this, the fun in this combat loop could be trying to, you know, lure certain enemy mobs away. Um, so you're, maybe if they have different patterns, they move, you know, making it so that you can engage one without alerting the other. And this adds an element of fun even before, you know, the engagement of that enemy mob happens. You also may want to get into position for ranged attacks, right? Maybe uh, you're a ranged attack type uh, character. And so if you get into a certain position, you know, get a certain angle, do certain things, you might be able to do some damage before they even get to you and, and can start damaging you. Once you engage the enemy mobs, you decide what direction to attack from, right? Are you going to take them head on? Are you going to try to attack them from the back? You know, there's some different elements there to uh, decide as you engage the enemy mob. And then during combat, you have various options, right? You can move. And then in the Hubble level, though, we have a basic attack, right? That could be melee or ranged. We have a uh, normal ability one and normal ability two. These are cooldown based, right? So you can use those if they're not in cooldown. And then the special ability can only be used when you build up enough energy, uh, which you build up from using your basic attacks. So we make sure that basic attacks are still being used and those will, uh, will build up energy. Potentially normal ability one and two might also have some some energy is, and then of course I don't have it listed here, but you also potentially have the option in combat to disengage, right? Maybe you realize, oh wow, I uh, bit off a bit more than I could chew, uh, and uh, this thing is going to kill me if I keep fighting it, and so you work on some kind of disengagement uh, strategy. And so all of that together becomes our combat loop. I'm gonna go into this more in depth uh, next week, but we'll just talk a little bit about the hub world combat system here. So our combat is multiplayer focused. It's a multiplayer game. Multiple players will need to work together to create reactions between different damage types that do more damage and apply strategic statuses. So the way that we are going to structure this is that, you know, individual attacks will do a certain amount of damage, but the really good damage is going to come from doing reactions. And this is where the multiplayer elements are going to come in. Uh, technically, each player will be able to do multiple, you know, um, damage types, right? They might have one normal abilities, one and one's another. So you will be able to do reactions among yourself, but you'll really be able to supercharge those uh, if you work together with other players. So damage types include physical water, fire, ice, and lightning. And reactions include vaporize, freeze, electrocute, melt, firestorm, and shatter. This is when two damage types come together. Right, so uh, this is this is why it's going to be so important uh, to have multiple players, you know, working together. Maybe someone is applying water while someone else is applying ice, and you freeze the enemies in place, right? Um, or somebody else is applying water, and someone else is hitting them with lightning damage, and now they're getting electrocuted. And these reactions can then spawn statuses, right? And so we have like the wet status, which has a slight movement speed reduction, but it also makes uh, you immune to burning. Uh, burning is just a fire damage over time. Uh, we have the cold status, which is a slight movement speed reduction, and it also increases the cooldown time. So this would apply to cooldowns on mobs, their internal cooldown times for using uh, their abilities, as well as the cooldown times on the player if the player yeah, gets the cold status. And then uh, we have a charge status, and so this is a, a slight movement speed increase, which is can kind of be fun there. Um, you know, sometimes statuses can have positives and negatives. Uh, and this spreads to nearby players and mobs. And then, uh, of course, if you're frozen, you can't move or take any action. And so that's just a, a quick look at, uh, at some of the items in the hub world combat system. If you have any questions related to this video, please leave your questions in the comments section. The open world server and Hubworld MMO Discord link is in the video description if you want to discuss something in this video further. Like and subscribe to be notified of future videos and to help with the algorithm. Until next time, have a good one.